Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for all your lovely feedback on the last episode. I'm really glad that uh, you found it really helpful. Those of you still booking your photographer or looking for a photographer, great that we answered some of your queries and it gave you a bit of focus and helped you pinpoint exactly what you wanted from your wedding photographer, which is exactly what we aim to do in that episode. Today, we are going to be chatting to Rami from Coco. Coco Bridal Boutique. Uh, now Rami set up her boutique last March just before a global pandemic hit so obviously not ideal timing but she's done fantastically well and in this episode she shares with us how she works, her background and lots and lots of tips if you're starting to think about your wedding dress or wedding outfit. Now obviously this is very wedding dress specific but uh, being an inclusive podcast, we have previously chatted to uh, some tailors. So if you're not looking for a dress uh, and you're looking for uh, a three-piece suit or something more masculine, whether you're male or female or however you identify, um, you can go to season two, episode four, where I chat with King and Alan, the bespoke tailors from London, and you get lots of tips on wearing a suit and choosing a suit. So we are very bridal specific today, um, but we do cover all bases across the breadth of the podcast in different episodes. But Rami was great, um, really passionate about what she does, really knowledgeable. We asked her some quick fire questions so you get to know her a little bit better as well and she shares her big day balls up. Before we go into that I have another lovely proposal story to share with you. Uh, do keep your proposal stories coming in, we love hearing them, they're really uplifting, some of them make us laugh, some of them make our hearts melt, um, just really really nice to, to interact with you and hear you know how your wedding journey started so this is from Nikki now Nikki was one of my brides a couple of years ago really gorgeous bride uh, lovely couple had a winter wedding in Essex um, and it was wonderful but this is this is how it all started so she says hi the short story of our proposal is that he did it in front of the Cinderella castle in Disney World so awesome and perfect but the longer story is so funny because it was a literal poo show She's done a little poo emoji until it actually happened. We were in Florida with my parents and we're going to Universal Studios for the fortnight, not Disney. We literally landed in Orlando with my parents and our six months old and I got sick. I was in bed and well for the first three days. Well, my dad has got a special tickets to an evening event at Magic Kingdom on a specific night. So we had arranged a meal in this nice restaurant and we had booked to sit in the boat as Ben had wanted to from the previous time we were there. Thankfully, by that day, I was feeling well enough to leave the apartment for a few hours, and I managed to wash my hair and look half decent. So on the way to the Disney Springs, we realized that Jessica, that's her little girl, has done a massive poo, <laughs> but the nappy bag has got left behind. I'm clearly not 100% with it at this point still. So I told Ben to go back with my dad and sort her out, and mum and I would go to the restaurant. The less travelling about, the better for me. So unbeknownst to me in the back to, to us, Ben says to my dad, I brought a ring with me. And after a bit of discussion, my dad understood what he meant. Said to Ben, you're both asking my permission, are you? Because she'd hate that. And he said, no. So anyways, we eat and make our way over to the park. I literally have to get through the gates and find the nearest loo. So not really paying attention. We get to Main Street and there's a professional photographer there and we go to take a picture. I'm so not with it that I don't notice my dad talking to the photographer, nor do I click that Ben has left Jessica strapped in her pram for the photo rather than picking her up. So I fiddle with my hair for a minute and next thing I know he's on one knee, people are clapping and we got given a happily ever after badge. The funny thing is because Jessica was six months old at this point, I was starting to get a little bit peed off that he hadn't proposed already. We talked about it loads and even knew roughly when it would happen. I even offered to get something out of his hand luggage on the plane to have a rummage for a ring box. If I hadn't have been unwell, I think I'd have been looking forever for signs. Like when he had to get the ring out of his bag and into his pocket for the metal detectors at the entrance to Magic Kingdom. Because I was so ill, I was just zombieing along. So it was a complete surprise and in one of my most favorite places. So thanks, Nikki. we love that story. Um, 
And it's great that even though you weren't well, you can laugh about it now. And it and it is a great story to to tell everyone. So I uh, keep your proposal stories coming in. Uh, they make us laugh, as we said, and I think you you love hearing them too. Right. So we're going to get on board with Heidi and Rami and have a nice little chat about wedding dresses. Hello, everybody, and welcome to your individual wedding podcast. Um, so in the last episode, we started your wedding planning journey, wedding planning journey. That's really hard to say, isn't it? Your wedding planning journey. <laughs> your yeah. wedding planning journey, um, discussing um, how to choose your photographer, the sort of questions you should be thinking about before you book your photographer. And wedding planning is very much a journey. There are certain things that you need to think about along the way, uh, suppliers that you need to book um, and services that you will require. And so we thought uh, for this episode, we would have a chat to the very lovely owner of Coco Bridal Boutique in Nottinghamshire, Rami. Hello, Rami. Hi. Thank you so, so much for joining us, Rami. We, oh, we've got you pleasure. on finally. We've been looking forward to speaking to you. So, uh, oh, no yeah, pleasure. I'm just really happy to be here. <laughs> we should start with how are you feeling? Because um, you were a bit poorly. You had a, a nasty sore throat. Did you recover okay? Yeah, yeah, absolutely fine. Uh, to be honest, this is the time of year when I normally get, I normally have something wrong with me. <laughs> I'm not one of those sort <laughs> of people who's always got a bit of a bug at this time of the year. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm all good. I'm raring to go now. <laughs> Excellent. And is it driving you crazy not being able to get into the boutique at the moment or are you still going in? I'm going in. Um, I mean, I'm lucky because I've got a lock up shop, so it's just me. Um, but it is. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating. It just being me the whole time. <laughs> it's always yeah. nice to have other people in there with you. Um, yeah, it's not ideal, but I'm still, you know, I, I pop in and I've, I'm always doing stuff. There's always things to do. So that keeps me going for sure. Excellent. Excellent. So I suppose the first question really is, um, I spotted a, a post of yours on Instagram recently, Rami, um, mm -hmm. where you were talking about timescales. So yes. um, for me, that's probably one of the, the first questions um, that I think we need to clarify. So when brides are coming to you and they are trying mm -hmm. on their dresses, um, with regard to timescales, how long this process takes from the moment they fall in love with the dress to the moment they actually receive their dress, what sort of timescales should they be thinking about? So um, uh, one of the things that is quite difficult to get across to brides sometimes is how far in advance they actually need to start this process. Um, so probably the main thing to bear in mind when you're starting to look for your dress is to, to really get that thought process started around a year before your wedding which to a lot of brides can sound a bit bonkers because it's such a long time before. But the reason why most bridal boutiques and, and mine is no exception, we would recommend that is because it takes between four and six months for a dress to be made. Um, now I say that from the perspective of somebody who stocks designers that hand make dresses. So they literally, it's slow fashion, you know, it's one at a time. They take a lot of care making their dresses. So the time frame just for the production of the dress can be four to six months. And then once the dress is, is actually in the store, you know, it's been made for that bride, we normally allow a couple of months for alterations. And the reason for that is we try not to do it too far in advance that weight can fluctuate, et cetera. You know, if you're hitting the gym hard, you don't want to be, you know, having problems with, dresses not fitting you in the lead up to your wedding so we try and do it fairly close in the lead up to a wedding um but then the seamstress also needs time in between your fittings to actually do the alterations work so it can take you know up to a, up to two months for that process so already before you've even chosen your dress you're looking at eight months anyway um which is why we normally say if you start a, a year before then it gives you a good few months to actually do your shopping and do your decision making and mull things over before making that decision and placing your order. Um, having said that, in COVID times, if you add on a few months to that, there's really no harm in that at yeah. all. And, and I think that's the main message to get across at the moment, that even though our, my designers and everybody's designers are doing their absolute best, we are expecting to have a rush. 
of orders once we get out of lockdown. Um, unfortunately, Brexit and COVID have caused problems with fabrics. Um, some of them have been stuck on containers because of Brexit and they haven't made it in time. Um, you know, there's fabric mills in Italy who are closed because of their lockdown. So it's just to factor in all of that, give yourself extra time if you absolutely can. If you can't, still try and sort you out. But yeah, roughly speaking, at least 12 months before your wedding is great. If it's 14 to 18 months in COVID times, even better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I think that is probably one of the, the first questions um, you see brides asking is, um, is it too soon to start wedding mm -hmm. dress shopping? And I suppose the answer is that if you're getting married anything in the next two years, then no, it's not too soon. Start, start looking around yeah. now. Honestly, if it was, if we weren't in a COVID situation, um, I think most boutiques would say, don't start too soon. You know, a year is, is, is about right. Things can change a lot in that, you know, if you're starting to shop two years before, designs will change, you know, designers will bring out loads of new collections. There'll be a lot more choice. Things will just move on. Your taste might change. But actually, we're in a situation now where we just don't know what's going to happen over the next six months. So you could be in a situation which a lot of brides are in now where they waited because they thought they could start shopping this year. And actually we're, we're essentially in a two to three month lockdown now. And that just wipes out part of your time frame. So, yeah. you know, in a normal situation, then I would always say probably no earlier than about a year. But, you know, that's all kind of out of the window now. I think whenever you feel ready to make that decision, um, it's best to go for it and, and give yourself the extra time. because you, you just don't know what's going to happen, you know, six, seven months down the line. No, no, absolutely. Um, it is definitely crazy times. And as you say, mm. you know, people have waited um, and then, you know, here we are and we're, we're firmly locked down for um, yeah. at least the, the next sort of six to, to eight weeks. Um, mm. And so um, I don't I don't want to upset you, Remy, um, <laughs> but you opened the boutique, you opened Coco Bridal Boutique at the start of 2020 what month did you actually open the boutique in march 2020 um specifically on the 14th of march oh my um, goodness. and yeah not long after that we then went into lockdown was it the 23rd or something we went into the first lockdown so um yeah not ideal timing <laughs> yeah um, and so for you, um, you'd obviously been, I mean, I'd, I'd watched some of your journey on social media. I'd mm -hmm. seen you uh, decorating the boutique and getting ready and getting very excited about the designers that you were stocking. Mm -hmm. um, and then you had a very short window um, before we were put into the original lockdown. Um, and then you did actually have a few weeks um, where you were able to, to be open and you were able to, to function. Um, so this is a steep learning curve for you. Not only did you have to, um, yeah, make dramatic change, you know, new boutique and then dramatic changes. So yeah. what, what changes did you have to make in order to accommodate those, um, those consultations when they were happening? Um, so I would say the if if anything the fact that we had the lockdown straight after I'd, I'd opened um, it kind of brought forward some stuff that I had on my list anyway that I was going to do and in you know the shop that I rented for my you know my boutique needed quite a bit of work done to it so there's a bit of lead up to actually getting it ready anyway and at the time I was still working full time so that took some time and there was that build up as you, you would have seen on social media and in doing renovation work because me and my husband did all of it ourselves apart from one very friendly electrician who came in and did the lights for me we, we did everything ourselves so in and, in and around doing all of that I actually had to put to one side things like my website a little bit so having the time during the lockdown even though it wasn't great timing it meant I could actually really dedicate a lot of time to sorting out my website because I completely revamped it before I opened I did have one before but I you know completely reworked it and managed to get that ready um you know things like virtual consultations which was something that I'd kind of thought about anyway but I, at the time when I was planning all of this out I thought well, I don't really know if people want to do that you know that then became something that I really need to make sure I could do and actually in that first lockdown I did a ton of virtual consultations 
quite a few to do with accessories and also dresses. And I think, you know, brides were starting to get a bit more, uh, you know, aligned to that way of doing things and that new way of doing things. So, yeah, I would say out of everything, you know, it wasn't great timing, but it meant I, I had time to bring forward some stuff that I should have been doing anyway, but just kind of ran out of time to do in the lead up to opening the shop. Um, and for me, you know, having all that time to really sort out Instagram and really gain that presence and build that demand, it meant that when I, we did come out of lockdown, I was super busy. I had like a really busy summer. So it was great. And, you know, all things considered, I actually had quite a good year last year, which I'm sure sounds ridiculous. But you know, I, because I was able to build that demand while we were trapped at home, um, I had all sorts of people come in to see me um, yeah. once I opened. So, Brilliant. yeah, it, it worked out. It, it sounds ridiculous, but it worked out. <laughs> and if, yeah. you, if brides are listening to this and sort of hearing you talk about virtual consultations, how, how do they mm. work and how do they differ? And, and how can sort of brides make the most from a, a virtual consultation? So um, for me, <clears throat> excuse me, a virtual consultation is is probably not going to replace an in-person appointment. It might do for some brides, but I think for the vast majority, it's a way of starting to have a look at dresses and get a bit closer to them without being unsafely close. Um, so, you know, at the moment, we're not able to get up close and personal, but it just gets you sort of halfway there almost. Yeah. Um, so what brides can expect from virtual consultations with me is I've got a nifty bit of kit, which is a Facebook portal, um, which I use for my virtual consultations. And it basically follows me around the room. It's great. Um, hours of fun. Um, but it does mean that you can see the shop, you know, get a feel for the, the place, um, get a feel for the vibe of the, the shop as well. Um, but you also get a really good view of the dresses. So it zooms in, um, it, you know, I can do widescreen, I can show you all sorts of stuff and actually just go through that process of talking about the dresses, talking about the fabrics, the construction, um, you know, just give you, it's just like a general chit chat really about the dress. Or just starting that conversation, I suppose, and getting, yeah. getting them thinking about what they want and what they don't like and, and things exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah, because sometimes with photos that you see on social media or on websites, they're great, but they don't, it, they, they kind of only go so far I think when you're trying to choose clothing um so yeah it just it just gives you a bit more information about a dress it means you can get a little bit closer I can zoom in on things like fabrics and talk a bit more about how it you know the, where the fabric comes from the, the weight of the fabric and it just gives you it almost tells a bit more of a story than sometimes just the model styled shoe or you know um studio shots on of the course. website do Oh, yeah. brilliant. That's cool. No, I obviously it's, it's new to me and it's not something I've ever done or needed to do. So I was just curious mm. about how it works, really, because it, as you say, it's such a sort of in person thing that you think of. Um, but there's, yeah. there's still quite a lot you can you can bring to the experience. Brilliant. Yeah, I think so, interestingly as well, Rami, um, I've obviously been doing uh, uh, virtual consultations with uh, my accessories mm -hmm. and um, I think it's allowed uh, brides from much further afield um, to, um, you know, if, if they've picked out your boutique and thought it's quite a trek um, from where yeah. I am in, in London to, to Nottingham, it allows those brides to get in contact with you and see the dresses and then think actually yeah. it's going to be worth the journey I've already earmarked three dresses that I would absolutely love to try on so when we yeah. come out of lockdown it's going to be worth me booking the train ticket and heading up to Nottingham to, to go and try those dresses on because you you do stock some quite mm -hmm. unique designers don't you yeah definitely and and you know I, I do get brides contacting me from all over the country really um I think the furthest away was a lady from Devon who did do a virtual consultation and came up to see me so yeah it definitely works for that um I think it just helps you to narrow down where you want to go and you know as you say is it worth even going up there um but yes I do stock some unique designers and I've got exclusivity um in the Midlands region with all of them so um that what well, that basically means is you won't be able to find those designers anywhere else in sort of the Midlands area. Um, with some of the designers, it's even wider than that. Um, and you know, really, I try and pride myself on on having designers that are unique and are, are different. Um, you know, the the different the differentiator for my boutique is that it's entirely focused on modern 
youthful sort of playful bridal wear um you know there's enough boutiques especially in my area that are doing the traditional thing and you know there's uh, that's totally cool and if that's what brides want please go for it absolutely um but i i felt like there was an alternative choice that could be offered to brides and yeah what i offer is is different it's not going to be for everybody um but there are definitely brides out there who don't want to wear something traditional they want it to be you know they want to look back and think i look really cool on my wedding day i didn't look like a you know a proper grown-up which is sometimes how <laughs> dresses can make you feel yeah i look like me but i look really cool and yeah, yeah. you know yeah. i nailed it that day yeah so i mean you, that's an interesting point that you raised there is how do brides find out whether your boutique or any boutique is the right boutique for them we covered this ground with photographers in mm. the uh, the last episode um it, it's it's when when you're planning your wedding for the first time and hopefully the only time <laughs> um, it's not it's not, not, not always easy to know where you find out you know who who are your suppliers who are the right suppliers for me you know if this yeah. is if the kind of person I am where do I start looking for somebody that fulfills that so what advice would you give um to, to couples in general really sort of looking for their outfits for their wedding day finding mm. somebody that expresses their personality uh, to be honest I think Instagram is the perfect place for that it's it's super searchable now so you can just put keywords in you know if you wanted to find a cool bridal boutique I mean hopefully I'd come up because that's that's kind of my strap line but yeah it, you know you can really hone in on the types of supplies that you want and it's a huge resource for just anything you could want wedding well anything you want in life really it's all on Instagram isn't it but yeah I, I would say Instagram's a, an amazing resource for finding and really nailing down those suppliers and um, you know almost creating like a short list of people to contact and it provides you with a means of quite easily been able to get in contact with them as well um, I do like Pinterest as well trouble with Pinterest I find is that the pins are from all over the place so you could find something on there and it either doesn't exist anymore or it's in Brazil and you can't get hold of it so I, again I do really like Pinterest for inspo but I think Instagram just helps you to find the suppliers and the people and you know your kind of group that you yeah. want to be involved in your wedding in your local area or at least in the right country um you so yeah to recognize the designers don't you i mean I, I know you know um boutiques is not my industry but i i know so many of the designers now mm -hmm. and you do start to get a feel for well that you know that designer is is very much about separates and that designer is yeah. very much about the fabric and and you do start to get a feel so when you are new to the, the whole wedding planning game that you know like you say Instagram gives you the opportunity to start familiarizing yourself with with some yeah. of those designs um Ross am I right in thinking that you spoke to um a tailor um for one of the I've spoken uh, to a tailor yes um King and Allen they were from King and Allen in London and they have I think they've got a couple of other venues um as well and that was really interesting because they have um they have brides as well as grooms so it's not obviously just a uh, you know one for one gender and one for the other and and that was really interesting sort of um sort of their experience of people coming in and not knowing what they want or like you say not wanting traditional so um yeah. I think I think sometimes you know that people think they either have to have the traditional white dress or go totally into something like a suit and obviously you sound maybe a bit more like a middle ground and I think yeah. as, as time goes on there's so much more choice for people as well um uh, so I, I think it's great that, that there's more choice and you know you can and something like like you say a virtual consultation where you can slowly start to narrow narrow that down without clocking up the mileage and, and all the expenses yeah. that comes with it really so yeah I think it's, it's great that there's there's more diversity and, and and I agree with what you say Instagram you can find all sorts on Instagram and sort of mm -hmm. find a community and yeah definitely so good tips I like seeing the face behind the the, the brands as well. Um, so I, I tend to sort of scroll past. You know, you, you you see these Instagram accounts, and and all the grid is just 
product um, and um, yeah, service and and you're left sort of wondering, you know, who's the who's the person? What you know, if, if I get in contact with this this company, who am I going to be dealing with? Um, am I going to be dealing with somebody young, somebody old? You know, it very much sort of um, gives you a, a good idea if you actually see some of the uh, the faces behind the brand. So I I really find that an attractive thing in in people's Instagram accounts that you can actually see these faces and get a feel for whether or not they will be your kind of supplier yeah, yeah definitely I know when I first started out I was a bit scared to put my face on Instagram <laughs> but <laughs> it's amazing how quickly you get used to it you know I'm always on yeah, story and they do you know, the the most, certainly for me they're some of the most popular posts actually they get the most engagement actually yeah so along those lines we've come up with some quick fire questions for you so our listeners can get a, a quick a quick insight into the person behind the brand Heidi you've got five and I've got five Minor general questions. Are yours wedding specific or have you gone general as well? I've gone for a mix. You've gone for a mix. I've, I've okay. Mixed up the time. So, so yeah, there's some sort of like bridal boutique questions, but then there's some more general questions as well. Okay, well, do you want to ease her in with some of those bridal boutique ones? Um, and <laughs> then I'll for... launch into some more hard, not hardcore, but some uh, I'm put you alternative on the spot, ones. Honey. I'm going <laughs> to put you on the spot. Um, trouser suit, as we were just talking about tailors mm. and the crossover, trouser suit or dress? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I think it depends on the occasion uh, that you're planning for. I, I have to say, I'm feeling a trouser suit these days. I, I like the fact that it's cool, it's kind of comfy, it's, um, yeah, it's super modern. So maybe trouser suit, but I, I'm still here for the dress. Definitely here <laughs> for the dress. That'll do. You also, I find this you give an either or answer, and then you're justifying it and covering yourself so you don't <laughs> yeah. really alienate anyone. We all do that. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Excellent. Are you going to go for one, Ross? I'll go for one. So, mine, um, what is the worst gift you've ever received? Um, I think the worst gift I've ever received was from my best friend many, many years. This was a childhood best friend. I got bought like the worst pair of socks you've ever <laughs> seen. And I don't, I just didn't understand. It was like a birthday present and I just didn't understand why she bought me these socks. And I still sort of remember them. I'm like, I'm still a bit offended, I think. <laughs> That's they were just, just really bad part. socks. <laughs> It's a panic buy, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, yeah. oh God, it's Rami's birthday tomorrow. I haven't bought her anything. Um, I'm in Tesco's. Let's get those socks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it showed for sure. So, yeah, it, I'm still scarred by the socks. <laughs> um, on, still on the, uh, on the bridal theme from me, pearls or sequins? Mm, pearls, I would say. Nice and classic. Yeah. Cool. They get, they're, they're super modern, but they're also kind of classic as well so very versatile i would say pearls yeah yeah go for it ross uh if you had a superpower what would it be or what would you want it to be reading people's minds oh i don't know if i'd want that wow (laughs) yeah actually yeah okay i might might find some stuff out that i don't want to know (laughs) interesting a close second would be invisibility i'd also like to be able to do that yeah that'd be quite good (laughs) Cool. You'd always know where you stood. Um, are you a morning person, Rami, or are you an evening person? Definitely not a morning person Yay. at all. <laughs> I'm an evening person. I could stay up all night oh, and not, not have any problems with that. But get me up in the morning. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. It takes me some time in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling that. I'm definitely feeling that, especially at the moment, waking up and it's still pitch black outside. Oh, and you're, it's yeah. nice. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, a motto that you live by? Um, I, I think my motto is always to, to sort of work hard because it, it does yield results. Um, I was always brought up to work super hard. And, you know, if you if you work hard, your your life will be good and you'll get stuff and you'll achieve things and you get a sense of achievement from it. So, yeah, it's probably working work hard. Up. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good ethos. Um, what's your party trick, Rami? I can do the limbo. Can how low can you go? <laughs> okay, I used to be able to go lower in the, you know when I was a bit younger, but um, quite low actually. I'm a quite flexible person. Mm. Wow. Have you ever played that the game? measurement? But I feel like a half a meter or something or lower. I could probably do. Oh, that, that is good. Oh, that is, is yeah. It? 
Yeah. Okay. We're raising our hands up and down here. If you, it's a really good yeah. podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> activity. Yeah, my, my it's, it's raising our hands up and down to measure half a metre. <laughs> cool. the visual aspect of the podcast. Uh, Favourite childhood memory? Um, oh, see, this is quite tricky because I can never remember anything from my childhood. And it's not because it was terrible. I feel like I repressed some memories, but it was actually a really good childhood. Um, I think probably sort of hanging out with my mum and my sister and um, I have quite a good memory of one thing which was sitting in a paddling pool in the summer you know when we used to have summers that were actually hot and they were really good um, yeah being in the paddling pool in the sunny garden and just hanging out with my mum when I was quite young because um, my mum was a, a, an at-home mum so we used to spend quite a lot of time as a little family my dad poor dad was working but yeah I, I always remember those times being good when summer was actually hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, summer memories are good memories. Um, if you could visit any part of the UK, and again, I'm torturing you here, um, any part of the UK, whether you've been there before or you've never been there, which part of the UK would you like to visit? Um, I would actually like to go back to Scotland. Um, so I visited the Highlands, oh, it must have been about a year ago now. Um, I only went to one very specific place, but yeah, there's a lot of that to see. So I think I'd like to go up to Scotland again. Yeah, it looks cool. beautiful. And last one from me, what's the most interesting thing you can see out of your window at the moment, if there is one? Um, yeah, I can see out the window. Um, it's, it's very dark. Well, it's true, outside, that is so. true. You normally, um, in the daytime, wherever you're sat, what would you be looking at in the daytime? The sky. I normally this like just... Sky gazing at the sky I mean you know my neighbour's house is about there as well but I try not to worry about that um yeah I get quite a nice view from where I live of the sky so yeah cool. that's probably my favourite lovely. <laughs> lovely lovely so are we on to a big day balls up we are on to big day balls up so we'll play <laughs> our lovely jingle and then we're going to ask you to share your wedding mishap are you ready for this Rami okay I'm ready cool let's go <laughs> Heidi and Rossi's Big Day Balls Ups. So yeah, my wedding day mishap there were a few things but the the one that I've chosen is one that still makes me laugh actually now um so we had a lovely day it, there was quite a lot going on on the day um but it got to the reception and shortly after we finished the wedding breakfast basically my dad completely fell asleep at the start of the reception and he was <laughs> full-on snoring <laughs> before anyone actually noticed it must have been at least half an hour he was just unconscious on a sofa in the venue um so yeah we obviously got loads of photos of that and remind him about that quite a lot um but yeah oh he, he he had a lovely day as far as i can tell but it clearly was that drink induced or just a long day or <laughs> no he's just he's one of those people that falls asleep anywhere anyway and he gets up very early so um yeah i think he was just tired or at least he tells me he was just tired and not bored but, um, <laughs> Wow, that's, 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 embarrassing. that's quite something, isn't it? I've, yeah, I've heard of grandparents falling asleep, but but never, yeah, father of the bride, shocker. Yeah. Oh my it's goodness. <laughs> it, must, it must be a dad thing though. My my dad was um, was famous for being able to sleep absolutely anywhere. And um, he'd been to um, see uh, The Who live at one of their big London gigs. And, uh, and he'd fallen asleep under the stage and he woke up with the Red Cross trying to resuscitate him because they thought he'd, uh, he'd either, yeah, drunk too much or, or taken some illegal substances. So uh, <laughs> it must be a dad thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, at least he felt relaxed. Obviously it was comfortable and it was nice and chilled and he felt oh, he yeah. could, he could yeah, just definitely let himself go. So that's cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're so polite, Ross. <laughs> I know, I try to be. <laughs> I'd be, so I'd be offended. I'd, I'd sort of, I don't know what I'd do. I'd, you didn't wake him up in a horrible way or anything? Uh, no, no. I mean, he actually woke up because we, we, there was just so many of us taking photos of him. He kind of realised there were people <laughs> oh, around. <bless> him. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, we love that. 
it's a stressful time at the moment for um, people planning their weddings. Mm -hmm. um, have you got a message for people who are um, concerned about weddings that they've got planned for uh, later on this year? Is there anything you can say to um, help them with their, their planning process, give them hope, anything you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah, I mean, you know, it is a really, really difficult time for planning a wedding. And I, you know, if I was in the situation where I was getting married later on this year, I don't, I don't know how I'd be reacting, really. I think it is a really unsettling time. I think what I would say is keep in touch with your suppliers. You know, they really want to help you right now. And speaking as one, uh, of you, you do want to reach out and you do want to make sure that your, your brides and your couples are OK. So feel like you can talk to your suppliers and just sort of check in on each other almost. Um, I think there is hope for later on this year, um, but I, I guess what I would say is just be prepared to um, maybe adapt. I think we've all had to adapt during the last year. Um, yeah. I think being prepared to adapt is, is a good plan B. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think there's hope for later on in the year. And I, I really feel for couples at the moment, um, but just stay positive. Weddings will come back. You know, they're such an important part of society um, and they're, they're such an important part of people's lives that they will absolutely come back. Um, we're just going to have to try and be as flexible as yeah. we can be as wedding suppliers and also, you know, couples to try and get through the next few months um but people are still getting married I, I still have brides getting married all the way through this covid crisis so you know weddings are happening and and you know they will continue to happen so stay hopeful it's a great message that's Thanks. a lovely yeah beautiful message thank you for that and do you before we go do you just want to tell everyone um what your boutique's called and how they can sort of follow you on instagram and social media yeah, sure. So the boutique is Coco Bridal Boutique. It's based in Nottingham. Um, as I said before, it's entirely focused on non-traditional bridal wear. So if you're looking for something that's cool, modern, a bit different, um, you don't want the usual traditional stuff, I'm, I am here for you. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram. The handle is Coco Bridal Boutique um, and the website is www.cocobridal.co.uk. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, contact me if you've got any questions, if you're looking for something in particular that's a bit different. I, I know very many people um, in the industry, so I can normally find stuff for you as well. But absolutely have a look at the website. There's all sorts of cool stuff on there. Um, and I'd love to be able to show brides what I've got um, and try and find the really cool wedding look. That's my that's my mission. Get yeah. everyone in cool wedding Fantastic. wear. <laughs> let's see more coco brides hey yeah definitely <laughs> thank you so much for your time this evening rami and i'm glad you're feeling Problem. better and i hope you have a much better 2021 and, and the shop is open again and full of happy happy brides so thank you yeah. so much thank you so much for having thank me you, it's been great it was just really interesting listening to um, to Rami, um, both as um, somebody offering advice uh, to Bryce starting that that dress search. Um, and I think what she was saying is absolutely right. You know, normally we'd be saying, oh, you know, a year is is adequate time, um, but these are different times. So um, it, it was interesting to hear from her how um, that process has changed as a result of. Uh, the pandemic and also as a result of, of the whole uh, Brexit situation that we're in at the moment. Um, so really good advice from her. Um, and uh, yeah, just really lovely to speak to somebody who has faced herself some serious challenges this year, um, opening her business, opening her boutique uh, the week before we went into a national lockdown, and yet still so full of fabulous positivity absolutely yeah great. I think what she said about you know being positive but working hard and being flexible I think she sort of embodies that doesn't she really she has had to work hard and be flexible right from the beginning and, and it's paying off so you know in all walks of life but if you're planning a wedding especially then I thought her advice of you know they will go ahead but just be willing to adapt our, our words to live by in these time in normal times but especially in these times so yeah definitely and I think things like the virtual consultations is um is the embodiment of that isn't it who would have thought that that's how yeah we yeah I find that I find that yeah. fascinating yeah because obviously I, I do virtual consultation in terms of sort of chatting over zoom but I'm not selling a physical products so it, I was just interested to see sort of how that how that came about and how that compared so 
yeah. yeah it's great that she was so quick to sort of like she said bring forward those those aspects of the business so brilliant definitely definitely and it's obviously working for her and yeah I mean you know we, we've discussed this before weddings may be a little bit different uh, for the foreseeable future it might be that the numbers are smaller um, it might be that the day is shorter um, it might be I heard um, uh, a, a venue recently talking about uh, purchasing uh, those rapid tests themselves yeah. uh, to test guests before um, the uh, ceremony and reception. So, yeah, we've just got to remain open and um, adaptable and hopeful. Yeah, and we're here. So if, if you, you know, we love hearing your stories. So keep bringing in your stories of, of proposals and of, you know, big day balls ups. But if you've got any problems, if you're stressed, if you're worried, you can come to us as well. Um, and we're more than happy to point you in the direction. We've had a couple of messages from from people already, you know, worrying whether their day will go ahead or what to do. Um, and we've been able to offer a little bit of advice and sort of send them away to different resources and, and things like that. And we're more than happy to do that. So that's why we're that's why we're here at the end of the day. So keep in contact Absolutely. with us as well, and we'll keep you as informed as as we can. Absolutely, lovely, lovely message to end on, Ross. We'll speak to you and everyone again in a couple of weeks. Excellent. Take care. Take care, Ross. Bye. Bye-bye.